has. Face them. To conquer fear, you must become fear. You must bask in the fear of other men. And men fear most what they cannot see. Welcome viewers to this week's reading session where I will be sharing and commenting on materials compiled from different sources on a particular topic. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you get notified whenever I publish free new videos. And also feel free to comment below if you have any questions or similar experiences or any suggestions. So in today's video, I will be exploring the reptilian conspiracy theory and how it can explain narcissistic behavior in many ways. Here we consider narcissists as reptilians, which are species foreign to the human race. We will, also con we will also cover some of the unexplained phenomena when facing a narcissist. For example, why they are so determined to destroy, degrade, and undermine other people, and why they have such a strong need to control or dominate others in barbaric ways. In part 2 of this session, I will be investigating mind control tactics, and ways to break free and defend yourself from it. And with that, let's start. I'm going to first look at a post from MysteriousUniverse.org on alien reptilian overlords. MysteriousUniverse.org Obey and bow down to your alien reptilian overlords. There have certainly long been plenty of reports of reptilian humanoids reported across cultures and all over the world. And such beings have become intertwined with the myths and legends of many cultures throughout our planet. But taking it to the next surreal level is a rather persistent and pervasive conspiracy theory that not only are lizard people real, but that they are taking over the world as we know it. The main thrust of such bizarre theories originates with a man named David Icke. Originally a professional soccer player, Icke's calling took a sharp turn into the bizarre, when he had a spiritual awakening and became deeply interested in psychic abilities and various unexplained phenomena. He really found his true calling, however, when he latched onto the idea that ancient, shape-shifting reptilian aliens had come to Earth thousands of years ago and were in the process of infiltrating society for the sinister purpose of taking over the world to work towards some sort of new world order. The theory first leapt into the public consciousness with the publication of Ike's book, The Biggest Secret, in which he lays out the whole thing in great detail. According to Ike, his research showed that millennia ago, a race of reptilian aliens called the Anunnaki visited Earth and began to oppress us and mate with us, spreading out their bloodlines and working their way into society until they controlled all aspects of our life. I claimed that these creatures uh, could shapeshift or possess humans, and they were claimed to have designed all of the world's major religions, as well as government systems and other aspects of civilization as we know it. All while they fed upon us and performed human sacrifices and genetic manipulation on us. Before we continue, I want to comment on religion and how it has been misused or polluted by some people in this age. I had close relations with narcissists who would use the Buddha's teachings, to convince me that they are respectable, wise, divine people, they would wear the disguise of someone who is trustworthy, virtuous, and well-intentioned to hook me in so that they can gain control over me. Once they have acquired my trust, they would then create mental and emotional distress through sexual harassment, covert devaluing, and destructive criticisms to make me doubt myself. They would also make sure to constantly point out my mistakes and shortcomings to wear down and my self-esteem. Sometimes the attack or violating, harassing behavior would occur at the same time as they are preaching or delivering the sermon. In other words, the teaching comes with the abuse, so that if I were to listen or accept the teaching, I would feel ashamed of having allowed the abuse for having weak boundaries. It's all a deception of their making. Now I want to cut to a site that talks about the deception of New Age spirituality and religion. Now this information might seem very religious at first, but I find there are some truths to it. I myself am a Buddhist, but came across this content when I was researching New Age Buddhism and thought that it made sense. 
The website is called Trumpet Call of God. Hear the word of the Lord spoken to this generation. So here's the information. 2nd of February 2006, from the Lord our God and Savior. The word of the Lord spoken to Timothy for all those who have ears to hear. This question was asked of the Lord. Lord, what do you say about New Age spirituality, psychics, mediums, Buddhism, and the like? Thus says the Lord, all is wickedness, deceptions clothed in falsehood, presented to the mass under the guise of so-called truth and enlightenment, the, the wide path leading to destruction. For those who embrace such things cast stumbling stones at their own feet, and those who teach such things teach doctrines of demons and shall surely fall into the pit. Now, I don't believe that this is entirely the case. For me, I believe Buddhism still makes a lot of sense. But I do agree that there are people today who corrupt and change religion and make use of it for selfish gains through falsehood. And that we need to be inquisitive and careful and ask ourselves what doctrines to follow and what not to. So let's move on. Beware, for these teachings are of the spirit called Antichrist propagated by those sent out by the evil one to disguise and pervert the truth amongst the people, to deceive the whole world and, if it were possible, even the elect, cunning ones who seek only to steal, kill, and destroy, to the devouring of whole nations. For the thoughts and desires of these people are perverse. They practice abomination and do not retain God in their thoughts. They are consumed by lust, easily devoured by their own evil thoughts and desires. Therefore again I say to you, beware, for evil comes in many forms, and shall only increase by measure, reaching unto new heights in wickedness. Behold, right has become wrong, and wrong has become right, and the right of the individual who has become a god unto themselves. For my children has removed themselves far from me, searching in vain, for they know not what. For I tell you the truth, what they call God is nothing, dead works, useless faith, all in all a leading away from the truth, lies upon lies, deception hidden within deceptions, both great and subtle, vanity and vexation of spirit, falsehood passed down from one generation to the next, deceptions built upon the ever-shifting sands of religion, philosophy and science, masquerading as truth. For the evil one does indeed wear many disguises by which he, by which he ensnares the people, clever contrivances both subtle and obvious, Stones of stumbling, rocks of offense, abomination hidden under the guise of peace and enlightenment, full of self and self-indulgence, delusion. Yet the fulfillment they seek through meditation and enlightenment leads only to spiritual starvation and bitter thirst, as they wander aimlessly through a vast desert of lies, wherein all dead men's bones are found, hidden within the mirage of inner peace. I also had a few bad experiences in my visit to Buddhist temples for group chanting sessions or prayers led by nuns or monks. There was a few occasions where the nun would be unusually friendly to me, which made me uncomfortable because they are supposed to be reserved and restrict or abstain from socializing. There were even occasions where they were being flirtatious and intrusive to my personal boundaries, which was in no way appropriate for a practicing monk. I tried my best to limit any contact with them and only go to the temples for the chanting sessions, but even then, they either pressure me into conversation or use their authoritative voice to penetrate me and covertly seduce me while leading the chanting. Finally, I decided to stop, uh, to stop visiting the temple altogether and chant on my own. In relation to this, I'm going to read to you an excerpt from Ananda's story documented during the time of the Buddha thousands of years ago and shared by accesstoinsights.org. The Buddha had instructed Ananda to oversee the distribution of cloth for robes to the monks. Ananda had accomplished this task very satisfactorily. The Buddha praised him for his circumspection and told the other monks that Ananda was very skilled in sewing. Later, when the Buddha was residing near his hometown, he saw numerous seats prepared in a monastery and asked Ananda whether many monks lived there. Ananda confirmed this and added, It is now time to prepare for our robes, venerable sir. Ananda referred here to the Buddha's instructions that a monk should care for his robes properly. However, Ananda seemed to have arranged a sort of sewing circle, maybe to teach his fellow monks the commended art of making seams. 
This was probably how it came to the communal evening sewing hours. Ananda had not considered that from this a home-like conversational hour would result after the day's efforts and hardships. Therefore, the Buddha gave this very emphatic injunction concerning the danger of mundane gregariousness for the monk. A monk does not deserve praise who enjoys socializing, who finds contentment in it, enjoys togetherness and is pleased with it. That such a monk should attain at will the bliss of renunciation, the bliss of solitude, of tranquility and of awakening in their totality, that is impossible. So now let's resume looking at the reptilian theory. Ike claims that the presence of these beings was well known amongst ancient peoples and cites as proof several passages from religious books uh, such as the Bible where he claims that there can be found references to these reptilians and their efforts to interbreed with and control humans. He also cites the numerous references throughout cultures to the worship of reptilian gods and other entities such as the Aztec reptile serpent god Quetzalcoatl the reptilian naga of India, and many others. This is all evidence of our ancestors having had contact with our reptilian masters in ancient times. He would say of this incredible story, I make these connections not just from intuition, but from a tremendous amount of ancient and modern evidence that shows that this reptilian connection travels right through these thousands of years up to this present day. Some of these references to serpents and dragons are obviously symbolic, but when you look at the evidence, there is a tremendous amount of literal references to serpent people, serpent gods. Over the century, these reptilians interbred with us and spread out into the world along with humankind and managed to insert themselves into important families and organizations from which they supposedly control religion, the government, education, and of course the media. These creatures are apparently attracted to our planet because of the vibrations present here plus the fact that we give them a chance to continue to reproduce. Ike said of this, The reptilians and other manipulating entities exist only just outside the frequency range of our physical senses. Their own physical form has broken down and they can no longer reproduce. Thus, they have sought to infiltrate human form and so use that to exist and control in this dimension. They chose the earth for this infiltration because it most resembles in vibration to the location from which they originate. These reptilians are addicted to the dense physical world and, and the sensations it offers, and they have no desire to advance higher. Their aim in this period is to stop the earth and incarnate humanity from making the shift from dense physical prison into multi-dimensional paradise. By having power in every single country, the reptilians have created a global prison that people don't even realize they are in. The prison was created by drawing country lines, which leads to endless wars and conflicts. Another way they control human is by distracting us with media, entertainment, and even politics. They have also made the, po uh, they have also made the population lazy and stupid by poisoning food, the air, and the water. A crucial aspect of all of this has been to create a network of mysterious schools and secret societies to covertly introduce their agenda while at the same time creating institutions like religions to mentally and emotionally imprison the masses and set them at war with each other. One common theme with the whole reptilian conspiracy is their interbreeding with humans and genetic experiments upon us. This mixing of their DNA with that of humans and other genetic doctoring has been claimed to have several purposes. One is to allow them to more completely blend in and infiltrate us, and another is that it was meant to limit our mental capacity in order to keep us meek, stupid, and compliant. According to Ike, this reptilian DNA lies dormant within many of us, waiting to be activated at a moment's notice to serve the whims of our reptilian overlords. He says, These reptilians and their aliens have corrupted Earth DNA with their own, and this genetic infiltration lies dormant until it is activated by vibrational fields generated by the Illuminati secret society rituals and others in the public eye like the carefully designed coronations and official ceremonies of many kinds, including even the UK state opening of parliament and certainly those of various other religions. Once activated, the DNA opens the body to possession by these reptilians and other beings. And this is what is happening to Freemasons in rituals that most of them deliver in parrot fashion 
while having no idea of their vibrational significance. This is why the Illuminati is so obsessed with knowing a person's bloodline. They know which have the potential for this activation and possession, and which do not. The Mormon Church genealogical database and now the DNA data banks are designed to identify those with the bloodline. These are people who are given jobs and roles that serve the Illuminati agenda, while most of them have no idea what is really going on and what they are being used for. Their DNA is then activated and they go through a change of character, uh, and a very different consciousness takes over their mental and emotional processes. Each new generation of the Illuminati bloodline families is exposed to the appropriate ritual to activate their possession by the reptilian entities, and so the cycle goes on. The phrase that comes to mind is, forgive them for they know not what they do. This all goes very deep according to Ike, with the bloodlines of the aliens getting rather complex, and with a complicated hierarchy involving both the reptoids themselves and the many hybrids they have spawned that are said to walk amongst us. In particular, Ike makes frequent mentions of the difference between full bloods, meaning they are of the original reptilian alien stock, and hybrids which are generally lower on the totem pole. Full bloods are claimed to be in possession of a vast array of powers, such as shape-shifting, which is supposedly achieved through vibrations that trick the human mind into seeing what the reptilian wants you to see, and other abilities such as mind control. Hybrids, on the other hand, are said to lack these powers, look very much like humans without any obfuscation, and are often not even aware of their alien ancestry. These hybrids are apparently constantly manipulated and influenced by the pure blood ruling class towards their own agendas. So this genetic manipulation and vibrational command would explain the many encounters of psychic violence and manipulation that I have and that I'm sure many of you have as well. For example, I would find strangers intentionally walking right up to a spot very close to me while I was waiting for my transport or shopping. It was very obvious that they are targeting me and closing in on me. Then they would claim my space, my body, and my soul, making me feel very violated. They will show me that they believe they own me completely through their willpower and psychic vibrations. There's no physical assault, but there's a psychic strangulation and oppression that is very, very real. It appears they possess the inbred knowledge of my psychic weaknesses and how my brain functions. Other example includes energy raping, where I could feel they had psychic intercourse with me without my consent or when I least expect it. Sometimes they would also use striking sounds such as the flick of a switch or dropping things accidentally when it's dead quiet or when I feel I'm in a private space and direct the noise at me. I believe these vibrations are directed at my psyche because I can feel them watching my reaction and smirking whenever I flinch or become frightened. Then when I try to confront them by investigating the situation, they gaslight and create the perfect scene of harmlessness making me question my sanity. Other times if I manage to refuse engagement with a narcissist, I can feel them communicating to other people close to me, telepathically almost through brain waves, to attack and torment me. And sometimes I could see in the corner of my eyes how the minions respond to the narcissist's psychic will, like they are being summoned by their leader. Another example I want to share is the look at me command used by reptilians through our DNA activation that could explain the narcissist's extraordinary behavior of making us notice them at will. I always feel my head naturally turns to them without my intention, like something else was moving or commanding my attention. Then just before my attention falls on them, the pleasant mask of the narcissist with its welcoming, magnetic nature sets in. This is all mind control and deception. I've also included a few real-life footage of shape-shifting flashes at the end of this video, which could be evidence of the reptilians living among us. Now let's go back to mysteriousuniverse.org. So these reptilians are said to be fond of taking over the wealthiest and the most powerful of families and secret societies. Stuart A. Swartlow's book, Blue Blood, True Blood, Conflict and Creation, goes into considerable meticulous detail as to how the reptilians are connected to the dealings of the notorious Illuminati. I'll attach a link to the book below. 
Of course, these alleged reptilians can also apparently be seen in powerful mainstream political families, as well as in other public figures and historical figures as well. The French King Charlemagne, the Pope, the Rockefellers, the powerful Rothschilds family of Germany, the British royal family, and many American presidents, including George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, the Clintons, the Obamas, and the Bushes, and yes, Trump, and all name, are all named as reptilians in disguise. Countless entertainers are also accused of being reptilians, including Bob Hope, Marilyn Monroe, Br Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, uh, Britney Spears, Justin Bieber, and many others. Virtually everyone who is anyone is suspected by Ike as being a reptilian or hybrid, and it all serves to keep us under control and subservient to our real reptilian masters. In the new reptilian world order post by Uri at newdawnmagazine.com, he writes about the reptilians among us. Here he quotes David Icke in his book, The Biggest Secret, who said researchers into the reptilian phenomenon conclude that at least some originate in the Draco star constellation. There are three suggested origins for the Anunnaki reptilian intervention in human affairs, writes Icke. Number one, they are extraterrestrials. Number two, they are inner terrestrials who live within the earth. Number three, they manipulate humanity from another dimension by possessing human bodies. Ike believes that these are all true. Ike's book is a repository of mind-bending, paradigm-shifting information, which sounds like great Z sci-fi movie, until you read the evidence. His premise is simple. What if the global power elite are part of these reptilian bloodlines, still controlling and ruling planet Earth as their own private galactic fiefdom? These bloodlines became the British and European aristocracy and royal families, and thanks to the great British Empire, they were exported across the world to rule the Americas, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. These genetic lines are manipulated into, into the positions of political, military, media, banking, and business power, and thus these positions are held by lower fourth dimensional reptilians, hiding behind a human form or by mind puppets of these same creatures. These same reptilians have been occupying the bodies of all the main players in the conspiracy going back to ancient times, believes Ike. The obsession with interbreeding with the Babylonian Brotherhood bloodstreams comes from the need to hold the reptilian genetic inheritance and therefore maintain the vibrational connection between the human body on the third dimension and its controlling force on the lower fourth. It was to hide this truth that they arranged the destruction of ancient historical records, texts, and accounts over the centuries as they ravaged and raped the native societies of the world. The reptilians wanted to destroy all memories and records of their earlier, of their earlier open existence and control in the past. If they could do that, humanity would have no idea that they were being controlled through physical bodies that look human, by a fourth dimensional force. Incarnation of the Lizard People With a background in Jungian psychology, author Barbara Clow excels in shamanic cosmology, an intuitive storytelling technique that integrates history, legend, and myth using her own internal guidance. Clow said of this, They, the Anunnaki, nevertheless have received a measure of control over the planet's surface. She writes, Most notably, they have most notably, they have achieved the ability to incarnate. No longer will they have to persuade the people to build temples in order to link up their own control centers. No longer will they require a channel to enter the earth. Now they can become humans themselves. The various non-physical lizards creeping around the canals of Barbeck are considerably attracted to the idea of taking human form through incarnation. She continues, They look forward to creating fear more directly, these monsters are not content to lumber around as fourth-dimensional reptiles, occasionally eating someone up, but much more appealing to them is the idea of actually entering a third dimension. In the 20th century, for example, actu actually becoming an Adolf Hitler, a Charles Mason, a Stephen King, or making the 20th century film that creates fear of the act of eating, the night of the living dead. They will even boldly show themselves for who they truly are by creating a movie called Five. Other sci-fi movies with this theme of alien reptilians on Earth includes The Arrival, They Live, 
and alien resurrection. It is also a special time, the return of humanity's spiritual powers and the choice of self-transcendence. The return of these archetypal powers is also a result of your ability to perceive wider spans of the light spectrum, she continues. This expanding vision is your key to integrating all the dimensions into your awareness. This broader awareness is natural, but it was once taken from you by the gods. The Nibiruans and other visitors, those demigods who felt disconnected from their source, narrowed your perceptive abilities in order to help themselves materialize on Earth. The Nibiruan mindset that has poisoned planet Earth has most recently manifested as the reptilian attitude that American political leaders call the New World Order. This is a mindset that believes in scarcity and limitation when the world is actually abundant and unlimited. This is the mindset that would throw all the people into crocodile pits. The world's power brokers and glutens control more resources than they need in order to protect themselves against the scarcity they fear. Clow calls them the world management team, which she defines as individuals in the third dimension who are controlled by the Anunnaki to carry out plans that benefit Nibiru and not Earth. All individuals working in team agencies, such as in the Vatican, secret societies, banks, governments, school systems, the medical system and many businesses, are agents of the Anunnaki unless they are conscious of the Anunnaki vibrations and do not carry out their plans. In recent days, the world management team has been calling itself the New World Order. Another source, crystallinks.com, also shares that John Rhodes was the first person to seriously investigate and publicly present claims of reptilian humanoid sightings and or contact. He established the reptoys.com research center in 1997 to collect, review, and present evidence of reptoid activity. He has also appeared on television and radio shows being interviewed about his discoveries and the science supporting the theory of reptoids. Rhodes contends that the majority of reptilian humanoids are descendants of the dinosaurs and are biological byproducts of Earth evolution. He also states that human attention has been intentionally misdirected away from the underworld towards deep space. So the subject of underground Earth-dwelling reptoids, an ancient, lost ancient civilization, can remain secret. Rhodes also adds that most accusations of politicians shapeshifting into reptilian humanoids are totally unfounded and that such reports are simply projections of collective fear and blame for the world's condition. From Gaia.com, Christine writes, No other alien species strikes as much fear in the human psyche as the reptilian. These beings, snake-like in appearance and malevolent by nature, are the stuff of nightmares. Is it possible that reptilian humanoids are the source of the devils and demonic entities who have tormented humanity since early history? Many alien researchers and contactees postulate that these lizard creatures may have been the mythological characters spoken of in numerous ancient re religious texts and folk beliefs. Communication methods. Many agree that a hallmark of the reptilian alien is an almost sadistic tendency towards eliciting human drama and fear. These beings use psychic communication and abductees report that reptilians seem to intentionally manipulate human emotions. This is achieved by using the emotional field created by trauma as an energetic source that the reptilian supposedly feeds from. Some can implant screen memories upon their subjects, creating false scenarios to hide an abduction occurrence. It is also reputed that reptilian, reptilians can access human dreamscape, attacking people on an astral plane. Reptilians are known to be master shapeshifters, able to assume human form. So this would explain narcissists being master illusionists, who has the ability to bend or manipulate our memories and perception. This aligns with my own personal experience with some narcissists, who I trust completely when I was interacting with them and they make sense in the moment. But later, when I recount the incident, I would feel like something was off, like they were lying about some things or they were hiding something, because the facts just don't add up. Sometimes I would also feel like there is something missing from my memories, like I was waking up from a dream in mid-conversation with them. My mind would feel a bit foggy, their speech wouldn't make sense for a while, but most times I just shrug it off. Also this might explain why, also this might explain 
why narcissists love to confuse their target and say things that don't make sense or repeat themselves unnecessarily so they could induce their prey into hypnotic slumber where they have access to their memories and perception. They are also able to cover up or erase their evil behavior from your memory by acting nice and lovely to you and mirroring what you want in the relationship only to drag you back to hell. On other occasions, I've encountered many times where they try to create blind spots so they can plot against me or destroy me outside of my awareness. And when I'm aware enough, my subconscious could see them moving with abnormal speed or reacting with inhumane aggression. But hey, it's just a theory. It could explain a lot of things about the narcissist though. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to like and share this video if you find it helpful. And make sure you click the subscribe button so you get notified whenever I post new videos. Also leave a comment below on any bizarre encounters you might have had or your opinion about this theory and its relation to narcissistic behavior. And don't forget to check out part 2 of this video in my Patreon page attached at the link below uh, where I'll be discussing mind control tactics and how to develop an immunity to it. So that's it for today. Uh, stay mindful, peaceful and lovely. Bye. In 2014, The Daily Dot published a story about the pop star's arrest that year, with a video of Bieber looking glum in court. Conspiracy believers noticed something strange about the way Justin blinked in the video, claiming that he was blinking the way only a lizard can. The clip now has more than 3 million views. Out of all supposed reptilian anomalies, the most popular relate to the eyes. On multiple occasions, News anchors have seemed to accidentally reveal a second set of eyes. In an interview with Wolf Blitzer, CNN correspondent Brian Todd was filmed blinking furiously before viewers noticed a flash of hidden pupils. Yeah, what about the cost, Brian? Uh, is that at all a consideration? It's a big consideration. Just about every former officer I spoke with says the cost of outfitting each combat troop with a tracking device is one of the main reasons they don't have them right now. So when you speak uh, with Those skeptics have suggested that this is nothing more than video compression. Others have questioned why the error only sticks to the eyes, rather than the entire frame. Bizarrely, the onset of blinking before the reveal of the second eyes appears to be a common occurrence. Both Fox News journalist Sharon Breams and this unidentified Spanish reporter have suffered similar issues. So could the truth be in the eyes? Thought I'd get a close-up. Now, this, I've, I've filmed off four different, there we go, four different Roku boxes, two different phones, and a camera, everything all the same. It kept being the same result. Whilst promoting her book, Jenna Bush, daughter of former US President George W. Bush, appeared to constantly shapeshift. Further, viewers noted that the anchors interviewing Jenna attempted to let her know of this mistake, repeatedly discussing how she changed. Talking with teenagers and students about Anna and, and the other kids I met in Latin America, and so far it's been really inspiring. And and, and not unpleasant. I mean, well, we'll change all that. No, too. we're not going to change it. <laughs> Don't change it, please. We, we will right. not change okay. it. We will not. She obviously people, hasn't seen the show. People have been nice, and they're not attacking your dad or his policies to you. Well, I met with my job. I worked for UNICEF, which is an amazing organization that works in over 150 countries. And my job was to meet with teenagers who were living in exclusion, who were living in um, extreme poverty or living with HIV and write their stories, listen to their stories and write them for UNICEF. And so, I mean, I obviously learned so much from these kids. I learned from Anna in particular, who has lived an extremely difficult life. I learned um, to live each day to its fullest. Doing any kind of missionary work, I think, really changes a person. And you and your sister had a little bit, I mean, you guys weren't Paris Hilton, but you had a little bit of a <laughs> reputation as party girls. Do you think this changed you? 
you know, so it didn't change my personality necessarily, but I taught for two years after um, the University of Texas after graduating and then went on to Latin America. And, and um, you know, of course, I've grown up. It's been seven years since mm -hmm. people had that image of me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, listening to their stories was it was incredible. And Jenna, when me. you see this, when you not only listen to their stories, but you get involved and you write about it mm -hmm. as well, does it change how you look, you're thinking about how government should run? Special thanks to Taryn who sent me this video before we get started today. And honestly, when he first sent me this, I thought, why is he sending me a video of a man dunking a basketball? Or not dunking, as the case may be. But then, of course, I saw it. I saw it a little bit on the first viewing, but then I really paid attention on the second viewing. And oh my god, what the hell happened to his hand just then? Did you see that? Everything was... Oh, and look right there. Did you see when he put it behind his back, too? Here we go. First of all, that arm right there what is up with that arm and then his hand turns into the back end of a seal maybe and then if you look right at the top his fingers come up over i don't understand it what's more this was posted on the social media outlet and no one seemed to notice so i don't really believe it was fake there's a shot of what i mean about the arm it looks unnaturally long and it looks now to be a little different color than it was moments ago and will again in a moment. It's just a little weird. I never got to go back to it a moment ago. Look at that. There you go. That is a perfect shot. His hand turns like flat and you can see it underneath and above. Camera. I saw a sight over here. This guy's giving me a hard time. Take a look at this. Can you get a camera on that? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that indeed. What the hell just happened to his eye? Why is it all of a sudden, like I live my whole life, I never see anybody's eyes do this. I see it once, and now it's everywhere. There was no disputing that. Personally, I have never believed in the sideways eye movement because it's too easy to fake. But this video right here, I don't know why somebody would fake a guy's eye doing that on a Best of Jerry Lawler video that I'll tell you how to find on Amazon and you can see it for yourself. If you didn't notice, his eye just did that again. Now, a couple things real quick. I'm going to be the first to acknowledge that what you're looking at here is grainy as hell. But you know what else is grainy? The Zapruder film it doesn't make it any less real or any less relevant. Grainy or not, this dude's eye turns into a slit and then comes back out. And you can even see like the, the milky white covering go over it. Super gross. And then to further illustrate my point, we'll show his eye doing that several times in a row. Just so you get the point. Just like the street lights lit this time, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know how. To 